Hello and welcome back. Today we need to get something behind that engine hooked up to that drive shaft. Those are my flywheel bolts right there. And I couldn't remember the torque specs, so I called up my new buddy Dylan at Thoroughbred Diesel. And I'm looking at 60 foot pounds for the flywheel bolts with blue thread locker and 35 foot pounds with the pressure plate. And uh, that will be what I will follow to assemble this today. Just need to organize my toolbox a little bit and start sorting out the specialty wrenches that are no longer needed for this project and put them in the big box. So you may have noticed me playing around with this alignment tool and it's because I've been burned before by a tool that isn't exactly on center. So I, on occasion, just keep taking it out, spinning it and pulling it, pulling it apart, putting it back together for a double check, just making sure that that clutch is actually going to be on center and my input shaft will actually slide in properly. All right, so the transmission is in and we missed the filming and I am sorry for that because it was an epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we could not for the life of us get this transmission up to the engine and there was nothing that looked out of the ordinary. I showed you the little trick that I told you about the input tool and um, everything was aligned. We had some really long 10 millimeter bolts that we could keep all of the holes lined up. And well, see right there is a dowel. And when there's a dowel in the engine and a dowel in the transmission, it does not Go they together. Hold three quarters of an inch apart. Yeah, it just held it right there and it was clunk, clunk, clunk. We could not figure out what the problem was, but it is good to go. We have the mount secured with the drive shaft back in, the exhaust is together, and we are starting to have a truck coming together. So we are getting somewhere, the truck is connected to the frame again, and in that last video clip you could see the, uh, the little hang up there and we couldn't figure out what was going on until we found the screwdriver stuck in the body mount. I don't know who put that there. That was me. <laughs> I put it there. But um, everything is going well. Um, that was why I was beating on the firewall back there behind the turbo because we thought that uh, that new downpipe was gonna hit the firewall. But as soon as we moved that screwdriver, everything was great. But uh, we're just putting things together and we're hoping that we can get three things on without having to take two things off. That's our goal. Exactly. So thanks again, Josh, for your help. This has been great. This is awesome. Great, great wrenching experience, some shop time. Yeah pull start stables. I normally work alone in my shop and typically don't have a whole lot of help and need to figure out a way to do things. I'm so thankful for the help that I've received working on this big project. 
Thanks again, Josh and family. We have the fuse block all wired back up. The power supply is together and the rest of the engine wiring is in place. There's a few things like the coolant tank and the mass airflow sensor still disconnected. But it's time to put the radiator in. And then we'll be able to put that clutch fan on and finish up under the hood. So we went ahead and lifted the bed up, but the rear bolts, we couldn't get all the way out with the bumper that's in place. So we just lifted it with the cherry picker best we could until it was about to touch the cab right there. Um, I ended up just swapping out the return fuel neck um, with this Texas truck donor because there's already a T in place and there's that big funnel and I think that's part of the fill tube so it doesn't froth so much I think that gets the fuel down into the tank quicker um, so we've got the fuel line return just loose up in there and I'm going to take it off of the fast or off the air dog and um, route it up into the frame under that cab mount and uh, coil it up but the supply has also been um, disconnected the main one from the truck I don't know if we'll be able to see up there or not there's not a whole lot of room to work up there but um, I was able to use that little PEX tool for the fuel line disconnect and uh, get the the factory supply line removed and this air dog one hooked up as well so I just need to tidy this up bolt the bed back down and uh, the engine needs fluids needs new coolant needs new oil and the AC still needs to be recharged up front we need the batteries the air box mass airflow sensor hooked up and um, I need to get the cover onto that and the only other wiring I need to do is the chassis ground over here, the body ground up front right here, and um, the wiring for that air dog system. We're getting super close. And just like that, I think we have a manageable list of things to do. This, I'm going to have to play around with a little bit. It's pretty messed up. I, where am I at? I can't stand these connections. They look like they've seen better days anyways. So there's no reason to try to start anything up like that. So I'm gonna go through this, see what I can do to clean it up. Maybe even shorten it a little and Go from there. The pickup bed is running out of supplies, and that's a good thing. I cannot wait to fire this thing up. It's a whole lot of truck. Yeehaw. <laughs> 